and welcome to Something to Talk About. I'm Linda McNamee and for the next hour we are going to learn what a library learning commons is and how it is important and why is it, it is important to you. But before you meet my wonderful guest for this evening, I would like to let you know that we are not live this evening because there is the BCSF telethon to help raise money to make our schools even better than they are now. But you can always email me at talk at bcattv.org if you have a question for me, suggested for a future topic, or misplace the email that you will see momentarily regarding our guest, whom you will meet momentarily. As usual, I would like to thank the crew for this evening. We have Colleen Moore, who is a volunteer giving up her Wednesdays to come and help me out. We have two staff members here. We have um, Tad Stefanek and Chris Flaherty who make sure that everything runs smoothly, up and running, and last but not least, I want to thank Tad and Chris for serving as Daddy Date Night because the kids are here in the studio. So thank you guys very much and thank Jen Dodge for also keeping the children entertained. Now, all of our administrative stuff, administrative stuff aside, I would like to introduce my wonderful guest for this evening, Rachel Small, who is a teacher librarian here at in the Burlington Public Schools. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming! <laughs> Yay! Welcome. It's nice seeing you not in your library. Oh wait, it's a learning commons now. It, correct. It could be a library learning oh, commons. Okay. 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 So. As I begin all my shows, I just want to learn a little bit more about my guest because everybody at home has already heard and, heard and seen about me, but can you tell me a little bit about yourself, where you grew up, how you came to the Burlington area, and why did you decide to become or interested in school librarian learning commons, and we'll figure out the differentiation of the definitions soon. Sure. Well, I was born and raised in the San Francisco Bay Area. Wow. And my dad's family was from, or is from, Seabrook, New Hampshire. So every oh, okay. summer I would come out here to vacation. Ooh. And my family actually owns Brown's Lobster Pound. So oh. when I was 14, I started working there every summer and stayed with my grandparents. Got all these little lobsters staring at you every summer. Yes, Fun. yes. I have lots of scars from killing many of them. Ooh. But wow. <laughs> um, and so, can you eat lobster now, or are you just like turned off forever? Oh, I love lobster. Oh, okay. Yes. yes. Wasn't sure if like it scarred you for life or anything. Yeah. Okay. No, I interrupt. I'm not sorry. At all. No, bring it on. <laughs> it's fine. So I knew I wanted to be a teacher since I was in the first grade. Oh wow. And when I was in fifth grade, I knew I wanted to be a fifth grade teacher. And okay. as a product of the California school system, I was well aware I didn't want to teach in California. <laughs> Where ketchup is my favorite vegetable. Oh, sorry, that was the 1980s. Never mind. <laughs> I was going to school then. <laughs> and so I decided to attend the University of New Hampshire. They have a wonderful education department. Oh, uh, okay. And I did, um, I graduated my undergraduate and then went straight to my master's and did a full year internship in Northampton Ooh. School in New Hampshire and oh, okay. landed my first job. And Yay. so I just stayed. Now, did you here. both do graduate work as well as your undergraduate at UNH? Yes, I did. Oh, okay. Yep. And Keeps it simple. It, it Easy does. To I was able to combine some credits with both. And so that was very helpful. Yay. And I, uh, I taught fifth grade for 11 years. Wow. And, um, That's one of the grades that I am terrified of teaching. Yeah. Oh, I love it. <sighs> okay. I love it. I feel like 10 and 11-year-olds, they're, friend, they're still friends with the teachers. Okay. And, but they're not too cool for school, and it's just great age. Okay. I thought that started changing in like third grade, but you've given yeah. me new hope for yeah. fifth graders. Yeah. No. Everywhere. They're amazing. <laughs> so, um, I taught for many years, and then I was in a s elementary school that uh, I just became a little too progressive for. So okay, uh, I was really into teaching the reading writing workshop, and that was fine. Oh, and then okay. I started bringing in technology and blogging and Ooh, Twitter. Oh no, and we can't do that. Okay. Yes, it was very scary, and um, so I decided to leave. And okay. I consulted in schools for a couple years, blending oh. my um, passions for teaching literacy as well as technology. Oh, okay. And I was did a, did a lot of consulting in the Manchester School District, okay. and one of the teachers in a middle school, um, they lost their librarian, and the 
and they asked me would I become their librarian and I literally laughed in her face <laughs> because <laughs> like me okay right because all the librarians that I had grown up with they were just they're mean and strict and they told us <laughs> to be quiet and they were gatekeepers of literacy and so there's just nothing no stereotyping I there no definitely stereotyping <laughs> And I, at the time, I was on the Krista McAuliffe Technology Conference Steering Committee oh. in New, it's New Hampshire's ed, okay. Education Technology Conference. And um, on that committee was my really good friend, Pam Harland. And she, I knew she was a professional librarian. She's an author of the Learning Commons book. Oh, okay. She's, Hence uh, the name. Okay. Yes, yes. Uh, okay. And she's also a professor at Plymouth State University, and she's the head oh. of the library and technology departments. Wow. And she's on the board of the AASL, the American Library School Association. Okay. And um, she and I are also doctoral students at Plymouth State University right oh, now. So you're working for your doctorate right I now. I am. Wow. She and I are doing that together. So in we're really good friends. In your spare time. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> but we were not doing that then. But okay. so she was my friend, and I knew she was this librarian guru. So I called her up, and I was like, someone just asked me to become their librarian. I'm pretty all set with consulting right now, but can you tell me what the job yeah. of a librarian do I, is. Do I really want to seriously consider this? Right. Or, okay. I didn't think I did. <laughs> really. But she explained to me that librarians are leaders in schools Ooh. and it's a completely, there's, there's been a huge shift over the years oh. about what a librarian actually is. Okay. So in, Well, technology has become more necessary in the school, so. Yes. Absolutely. You were just ahead of your time. I was. <laughs> and I had no idea that the <laughs> job of librarian actually was perfect for what my passions are. Oh, cool. So, yeah. So when did you come to Burlington? Um, so I was in Manchester for a oh, year okay. and as, as I took that job. And then I put it on, I guess, on my Twitter world. I'm pretty big into Twitter. Okay. I love Twitter. And um, I was, I'm friends with Patrick Larkin and Jen Sheffer, and okay. we were all following each other on Twitter. And so they found out I was a librarian. And there was a librarian opening here. Oh. And um, so they're like, you need to come to Burlington. And Burlington, to me, I've always known as one of the best school districts in the country. Oh, it was cool. The first I like to believe that, but it, I have no basis for real <laughs> comparison. Oh, it really is. I've been in many other districts to know <laughs> that this is like my dream job. Yay. And so I've been here ever since. This is Excellent. my third year here. So, yeah. So April is Library Media Month. School Library. School <laughs> Library Media Month. Yeah. But we learned right before we started recording today that you are not a school librarian media expert or whatever we right. called it a library you, media specialist is what library the specialist old school you term. are a teacher librarian I so am. what exactly does that mean well i was a teacher first and okay. i truly believe being in the school we need to be teachers so i okay. love having teacher as the first title and then a librarian oh, okay. and it's a pretty controversial term in the library world a lot of people call themselves really? school librarians okay. a lot of people who i respect pam well, harlan yeah. considers herself to okay. be a school librarian but i call myself a teacher librarian and we, oh, we debate okay. about it quite often <laughs> um and then there are a lot of people who still call them library media specialists which i would say would be the old school type oh, okay. of and i would never it's so, yeah. been a while since i actually was in a school library to right. learn right although i love coming right. to see you and volunteering for your book fair well, i appreciate your help even though much. my kids are like mom i really don't know i'm like oh i want that one, I want that one. <laughs> You're one of my top buyers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know if that's a good thing or not. <laughs> it is for me, so thank you. So, okay, now we touched upon this a little bit, where at your school, it is a learning commons. And Correct. we mentioned it came from your friend's book. But yes. can you tell me more about that? You know, why is it a learning commons and not a, a media center? Right, absolutely. Well, library, libraries have been around for about 3,000 years, mm -hmm. and their job was always to protect the information, oh. and traditionally known, and- Well, um, when you have to handwrite all those manuscripts, you really want to take care of them. Right, exactly. <laughs> and um, so, and librarians were strict because their job was to protect the, the okay. books and the information. And about 20 years ago, the World Wide 
web came, the mm -hmm. internet came, and in 1998 we started ser doing Google searches. And then in about wow. 2012 was when most people in the United States had a cell phone. They were they became ubiquitous, oh, okay. and the World Wide Web was in schools. Now, was that a cell phone or a smartphone? I think 2012 was probably the beginning of smartphones. I, I think I think a phone yeah, that was connected okay. to the internet. Okay. Yes. And then the Wi-Fi's were pre Wi-Fi was prevalent in schools as well. Uh, okay. And so that's when a big shift happened in the libraries yeah. because Not we were no shift, it was like an explosion. <laughs> it was it was exactly an explosion. <laughs> okay. And schools reacted by bringing computers in, which is great. Okay. And so that's when libraries started to change. And even Burlington they started introducing like iPads. I don't know if they're still iPads, but they are. Yeah. In the high school, it was like mandatory that all their work's done. And now, when my kids were in preschool, they were like on apps on the iPad. And I'm like, wow. Right. So Burlington has really adopted that technology. It was one of the first. Oh. Yeah, absolutely one. If not the first. I should check my facts oh, before I say that, okay. I think. One, well, one of the first. Yes. It definitely It could was. be one of the first two. It could be one of the first 100. So right. it's... I think it's safe to say one of the first. <laughs> okay. Definitely. And so um, now it's not that information and books are rare because they're not. So okay. libraries need to change to adapt to that. Okay. And um, so now it's our teachers' times and the students' attention that are what we librarians need to help okay. and capture. And so the process, the research process has also changed a lot. So instead of um, just reading and writing books, we have to um, integrate complex multimedia rich sources. Uh -huh. Sources, um, now you can just change a reading level by a click. So, uh, oh, wow. yeah, so kids can go to see advanced reading levels or oh. average or and just okay. according to how much information they want or how complex they want the text to be. Okay. So now is this just like a one direction thing where the kids go on and read it or is there anything that the that you work with where the kids contribute to this online media library? Oh, that's a whole different question. Oh, that's a whole different question. Okay. <laughs> but yes. Finish, finish. No, 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 no that's okay. There there are there are lots of sources that are one-sided that kids get the information okay. and there's text as well as multimedia and there's videos and there's pictures okay. and then my favorite part about the internet is when kids can start collaborating so oh. they can use blog posts for instance oh, wow. and so they have an authentic audience when they have write with blog wow. posts so no now longer how early does this start is this like I did, grade or I'm not sure about in Burlington, or? but a lot of kindergartners are even blogging. Really? Yeah, and it's it's really cool because students no longer have the teacher as the only audience, but students oh, have okay. the whole world as their audience. Which and could be a good thing and well, it could be a not so good thing. I think it can be a good okay. thing in the way to make it a safe way. And oh, so okay. there's there are lots of different various blogging platforms out there. My favorite is Kid Blog, and uh, the teachers have to approve every blog post that gets published uh, as well as okay. every comment. Uh, okay. So it's very a walled garden, so kids are uh, safe. Okay. And but that adds a lot of work to the teacher, doesn't it? It does, but it's worth, in my opinion, it's uh, worth okay. every second because my kids have an authentic audience, therefore they're more motivated, okay. and they love to write. The more the more kids write, the better they get, the more they like it. Very similar to Practice the reading makes process. Perfect. Absolutely. Okay. So, um, yes, the internet has added a lot for the ability for kids to communicate. Okay. Which I've loved. Yay! So, yeah. And, um, and students can learn anything at any time from anywhere okay. and it's not no longer just the library they get the computers and now we have one-on-one uh, okay. -one access for first grade through 12th and i really hope wow. we get kindergarten access soon um soon. kindergarten one yes <laughs> please <laughs> i lost it now i might be jumping ahead and everything but okay. again i am like the queen of tangents with the library now being known as the learning commons back when i was growing up there was like one time a week when we were able to go visit the library right. but with this access to technology and reading and writing and researching and all this other kind of stuff how accessible 
is the Learning Commons to your average student? Well, that's a great question. So students have access to the Learning Commons always when they can okay. go to www.bpsedtech.org and go to Pine Glen oh, okay. and get our database information. Oh, so they can okay. get into our library at to access to what books we have, what books on hold, okay. they can get Britannica, they can get all the information that we subscribe to, oh. so they from anywhere okay. at any time. And also, um, the Learning Commons is always open. That's another shift. Oh, no okay. longer do do kids only have library at 10 a.m. on Tuesdays. I don't okay. finish books every Monday night, and nor okay. do I assume students will ever either so okay. they're allowed to come to the learning Commons. because i'm anytime. thinking like middle school and high school you have study hall where you have a free period right. and you could go hang but i don't know of many third graders that have all this you know a free period right they don't but in the beginning of the day the end of the day oh, during okay. their lunch and recess during english language arts the teachers oh, okay. the pine Glen teachers are so amazing and they Yay. have really adapted to this new practice cool. and they let anytime a kid needs a book they send them down to the learning commons it's excellent amazing so. now we have mentioned pine Glen. do you have a collaboration with other elementary schools for any purpose or is it just like wait until you get to middle school uh, I we do and I meant to send a picture about that but I forgot so all of the elementary school librarians we get together quite often okay. and we plant we organize various things so um, Dr. Conte believes that everybody in the district should have an equal access to the library learning commons which I believe is fair true. enough so we all we collaborate together quite okay. often to and didn't mean to put resources. you on the spot but I'm yeah, just like no, you know it's fine yeah, and I forgot to send a picture of the four of us. And we also get together with the middle school and the high school oh, librarians, okay. teacher librarians So there's librarians like a continuity well. yes. throughout the whole K through, well, 1 through 12. Yes, there is. Soon okay. to be K through 12. Yes. Oh, okay. And we all call each other teacher librarians, which I love. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's important to me. So do we want to put up the red picture? Sure. Which is the Learning the Commons learning mindset. mindset. Yes, oh, thank there you. there we go. So I thank just you. wanted to talk a little bit about the shift to the Learning Commons mindset, that the Learning Commons is the cultural educational center of the school. It's not just a room of books and computers like it okay. used to be. Uh, the Learning Commons is where the technology and library environment meet up and provide students and teachers with space services programs and only practical, relevant, and interesting resources. Hmm. Okay. I'm going to ask you about that afterwards. You can ask me now. Okay. Well, I'm just wondering how, how do you do that? Because the World Wide Web is a pretty big thing, and how do you make sure that it's only practical and relevant resources? So... There's a lot of resources that we used to purchase every year because that's what we did, okay. but kids were no longer using them. So we ask our uh, teachers and we okay. ask our students, like, what do you need? What do you want? What's in the curriculum? Uh, and okay. so we adapt. Like what Botanica we or something? Right, oh, exactly. Okay. Like subscription services. That right. Are and we oh, had okay. many that were not used at all, and we were paying tons of money. And we also had subscriptions that the Burlington Public Library was paying for as well, and that made no sense to me. Yeah. Why are so the residents are essentially paying for this twice, twice which is insane. Yeah. So we stopped and we start. Much. We collaborate with the Burlington Public Library as well. Oh, okay. So we just make sure we find out where the teachers, what the curriculum is, what the teachers and the kids want, okay. and we. We and there's been a learn. new science curriculum being introduced, so that's probably having a, like a trickle-down effect of what you need to yes. have available to your students Absolutely. as well. Absolutely, and collaborating with Sean and Wendy is priceless. So we oh, just yeah, do a amazing. They, they I love really them. are amazing. <laughs> and so we just work to them to make sure the resources we're providing for our students okay. is the best. So as far as like the, the, the room where the Learning Commons is, you mentioned that it's not just books and tables, and I'm, you know, I'm kind of looking at your notes going, tell me more about the physical environment of it. Right. Well, it's just a warm and comfortable area. Okay. So we'd, I'll talk a little bit later about oh, the changes okay. that we've made. Oh, okay. But the idea is that it's the center of the school, oh, and the okay. kids are comfortable there, and they can lay down and read, and they can. Um, we have makerspace activities, a lot of coding activities Ooh. that kids come and they learn by doing. So it's oh, not okay. so much um, 
a place where kids just sit and read Sit and books. read and learn. Yeah. They're yeah. actually physical, hands-on. Well, that's yeah. cool. Yeah. Because everybody has a lear different learning style, and sometimes, you know, you really need to physically see what happens if you do it wrong. Right. Exactly. So, you know, build a house of cards like this. Well, if you do it wrong, it's going to fall down. So, <laughs> exactly. okay. And so on to um, or finishing the learning commons mindset. So the learning commons environment is welcoming, flexible, comfortable at its core, like a living room. So okay, that's a lot of go. the changes we've made. And we'll see a picture of that later. And most significantly, the learning commons mindset is about being laser focused on our users Ooh. and their needs as they continue to change. And the librarians are working within the space to collaborate and teach. So collaborate with the the classroom teachers yes we collaborate with classroom okay. teachers and we also collaborate with students and we the oh, district coaches okay. and so just the whole idea Wait, is what's a district coach so sean and wendy are the oh, science coaches okay. and katie berkery is our social studies coach okay. renee sacco is our literacy coach okay i'm sorry i just no, don't be sorry know that's great not probably <laughs> other people need to know that as don't well. know these things you know it's like because your kid comes home from school so what'd you do today nothing did you learn anything <laughs> no yeah What's going on? Nothing. That's something blogging can help too. So if kids, when they, um, when we put their work on YouTube and yes. Twitter and other social media platforms, Seesaw is see another one that my kids. Seesaw is amazing. Using. Yes, it's fun. A digital portfolio. It's uh, great that our okay. whole district, K through, I think it's K through five right now. We're all on Seesaw, and okay. I think it's going to extend to middle school and perhaps oh, high school. Okay, that's the idea. So. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on. I'm like, ooh, yeah. okay, this is what, you know, because you get the paper home and it's just, you know, we kind of alluded to this, it's it's static. It's like, okay, this is a drawing of something, but then, you know, you log on to Seesaw and you're, or you get notification, your child has a new submission, you log right. on to it and it's your kid reading. Right. It's pretty cool. And can you imagine seeing that from kindergarten through 12th grade of how... Oh, your you just child to hold has, on to that stuff. Right, exactly. Does it save or it, is it? It, it okay. does. We just need or to subscribe or, to it as long as Seesaw is still in business. Okay. There's a lot of flexibility. Because, yeah, <laughs> and that would be fun. In this you know, tech. Yeah. High school graduation. Remember when you were in kindergarten talking about worms or something? You exactly, know? <laughs> exactly. And I love, <laughs> I love it. This. It's also a place for kids to reflect about their learning. So, not okay. so much seeing the. Pro you can see their progress, but you can also see the process, which mm. I'm all about process and okay. and kids being self-aware and understanding where they are and where they need to go to improve. So, so with this process that you just described, do you think that's helping the classroom teachers target individual learning? Absolutely. And improving? Absolutely. Cool. So yeah, if t teachers, our teachers are wonderful. So they well, yeah, they are. And I, I don't right. want to sound, but... Oh, I, so they know where our students are and where the okay. students need to go. But to me, what's so great about Seesaw is it helps kids understand where they are and where they need to go. Okay. And parents to understand where kids are and where they need to go. And having that it. collaboration between oh, the parents, okay. teachers, and students is priceless. In any way, teacher librarians can help facilitate that Ooh. is awesome. Okay, so we had alluded to it a little earlier. Yes. That... Recent was it this past summer? Yes. That Pine Glen totally got a new space. We did. Yes. So um, we have some pictures of before pictures. Uh, Pine Glen had the library cons library learning commons consisted of two different spaces. So okay. this was the big space in the learning commons. Okay. And then there was another little room that had different mismatching carpet flooring oh, okay and it was really messy because that's the genreification process that i'll talk about later okay but so this summer we had the middle wall connecting the two rooms <gasps> Ooh, torn down it was okay. demolished which is the next picture you'll be able to see wow and you can see that um we have brand new carpet instead of three different floorings <laughs> in the two rooms and it's clean long story it's clean yes and then the kids were able to pick the colors. So we had, actually Pam Harlan's sister is a professional interior designer. Ooh. And she picked out a whole bunch of different colors that would look well and okay. the, look good in the library. Learning Commons. And the kids voted on the colors okay. they wanted. So, so you probably don't want Fire Engine Red in, it's not really no. a calming color. No, but the, yeah, the bright yellow and orange, not all adults were happy about that. 
but I insisted. Well, yellow is kids, bright and cheery. It is, and, and the kids chose it, and it's I, it's a library learning commons for kids, yay. so I love it. And um, so yeah, this is a picture, one of the few pictures of our our new space. And the kids like the chairs, but they, they love the chairs. They all move because I'm like they're not. I can't imagine like sitting there and being comfortable, but that's probably because I'm no longer a kid. Yeah. Um, John Lyons, the school principal, he suggested that I get a sample of one of them. So I got oh, a sample okay. last year of the stools and the kids flocked to it. They <laughs> absolutely loved it. I love and it. so we knew that that's what we wanted that's to do. That's it. Okay. Yeah. It's all about the kids. All about the kids. It really is. That's why we're here. Yay! Now, I'm pretty impressed that you trusted the kids making some uh, design decisions. Yeah. Well, I had the professional pick uh, okay. the original colors, and then they just picked from the professional picture colors. And then you went back to her and said, okay, do we really want to do this? Yes. Yep. You know, because yep. there's some combinations that you probably would not want on the walls, <laughs> you know, like purple and orange or something. I don't know. Correct. But. Well, we had purple before. It was oh, pretty. Okay. I, I was glad to get rid of that. I don't blame you. But the first step before actually the wall turned was torn down and demolished last year, I spent a lot of time weeding the collection. Okay. And so what that means... Like your entire book collection? I went through every single book in our collection. We have 13,000. Wow. And I looked at it to see how old it is, how it smelled, were pages torn out. Oh, I was able okay. to see when was the last time it was checked out. Oh, and so, okay. um, and I, I made the decision of whether to keep it in the library or to get rid of it. Oh, and this okay. is a big topic for a lot of people because it's hard for some people to get rid of books and to weed them out. Mm -hmm. I know it, it's hard for me to get rid of books, but I realize, but having the most relevant collection okay. makes it easier for kids to find books that they do want. So having oh, books that are okay. never circulated or that smell or it's just it's not yeah. conducive to having a good library collection okay. so I got rid of those books by big hearted books it's out of Massachusetts they came and picked them up Ooh. and they repurposed them for kids oh, in need cool. so you really weren't getting so, rid of them you were just right. donating them to oh okay. exactly and there's a picture right here of the mobile guy wow Colleen. <laughs> So he came and he picked them up and then he donated them. So cool. that was the first step. And Jennifer Lagarde, she her motto is just weed it. And so kind of we uh, read. Oh, yeah, I get yeah, it. so yeah. clever. And so I, when I questioned the book, um, I just decided I made the best decision possible. And there was a couple that teachers came afterwards and like, where's this book? And I just bought it again. <laughs> so. Oh, okay. Well, sometimes, um, you know, do you have like multiple, you know, like the Burlington Public Library has multiple copies of the same book. Right. So if a book was no longer common or popular, even just saving one copy instead of six I could that still, a lot. okay. Yes. So that just in case that teacher said, I really need a copy of. Right. You're like, right. okay, well, here's a copy of it. Okay. Right. Exactly. And um, the mobile, the next step was the mobile furniture, and I am so grateful for it. I'm grateful for everything, but if I had bought, or if the library had bought, the school, the district had bought, purchased mobile carts, okay. it would have been really, really expensive. Okay. And we have a very talented crew of maintenance men. Ooh. This district who made these wow. uh, beautiful mobile bookshelves, they made us 21, and they're double-sided. Oh, cool. And they, the, the quality is so high, I couldn't have purchased anything as lovely as they are. And um, so they designed these and they made them for us and they move. So oh. we can have the ideas, the learning commons, the chairs we have and the shelves we have all okay. can move. So we can have whole grade levels or two grade oh. levels in the learning commons instead of having the static shelves in the same place oh. and the chairs in the same place. And so it was really important to me to be able to have these mobile shelves. Excellent. Now, speaking of the acquiring I guess, of the mobile shelves yes. and the maintenance guys fulfilling this for you. Where did all this money come from? Was it strictly just, you know, through the school department? Was it a grant that you had written? You know, is there like a regular cost to maintain this? I mean... <laughs> Those are a lot of questions. Yeah, I know. A lot of tricky questions. 
There, um, and feel free to say that's another show. But. Okay. Um, I don't think it will cost money to maintain our space. Okay. I do know, I did write a grant for a BEF grant, but was told that this type of changes I wanted was for the district to ha oh, take responsibility okay. Okay. for. And so the, t the district did. Do Yay! That. So, okay. yep. And we saved a lot of money by having the district build most of what we Excellent. changed. And they did the demo work themselves. And I think we had, um, we hired, what's a better term for prisoners, to do the painting. Oh, okay. Um, so, yeah. Inmates. Inmates, I don't know. yeah. I don't, I don't know. know. But, well, that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, it's really cool. I'm Doing grateful. their job skills, you know. Yes, absolutely. Okay, excellent. And then um, the next picture I have is the self-check-in, check-out station oh, that I learned about. So the kids yeah. can actually... Right. So Help instead themselves. of me having an old school circulation center, kids take responsibility because it's their space. Okay. And when they are finished with the book, they come in and they check it in and they put it on the shelf underneath there. Okay. And so then, you still reshelve the books because yes, I'm I, not sure I would trust all right. of the kids doing that. Well, I have a lot of parent volunteers who do most of the reshelving. And I do have some students who are very responsible oh, and who help reshelve okay. as well. So, yes. And the whole idea is my time is spent teaching kids, and so okay. I and I don't want the library to ever library learning commons to ever be closed. So when I'm teaching a class, kids are free to come in and they check oh, in their books, okay. they go find other books, and then they self check them out as well. Okay. So it's it's really cool. And have the kids been responsive to this? Are they you know making sure to check stuff out instead of just leaving with a book? Right. Well, most um, of the time there there have been a few mistakes, but we're all human and we'll all make mistakes. But most of the time, it's very kids love the independence. They oh, love yeah. that they that I trust the them. little laser scanner. Yeah, they love using that, and they take ownership and they Excellent. do it really well. Yeah. Wow, all these things that I didn't know. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. It's very exciting. And so the next part that was really the most difficult part that I'm not actually finished but I almost am is the genrefication process okay that's and a big word it is a big <laughs> word genrefication to genrefy our collection so okay the idea is to make the library so, more like a bookstore because okay. so, that, that, I don't remember ever being able to figure out the Dewey Decimal system right so, so like I've broken up with Dewey Decimal I okay. know that breaks a lot of people's hearts but oh, it's, poor Mr. Dewey <laughs> yes may he rest in peace <laughs> um so I find the purpose I believe that the purpose of a learning commons is for kids to be able to find the books so you couldn't figure out Dewey Decimal I couldn't figure out Dewey Decimal these kids can't figure out Dewey Decimal and we don't want to waste I don't want to waste their time teaching them Dewey oh Decimal. I understand the concept so, of yeah. it and yes yeah. it, it was good in its time but right. now it's it's done we've yeah yes. we have other options right absolutely okay. and so, so when kids, genrefication genrefication when kids go to bookstores, they find books really easily. And so we are, we've turned our learning commons essentially into a bookstore. So mm -hmm. kids come in and they can see, lots of kids love animals, they love cats. And so I have a cat section that says cats fiction and it's right next to the cats nonfiction because a lot of kids only read fiction, but I, got, I want them to read nonfiction too and yeah. vice versa. And if they like cats, then right. get this little cross I don't want to say cross-contamination, but... Right. No, they're right next to each other. And there's lots of books that um, that are sep Dewey Decimal separated, but they should be together. Okay. And so that was the purpose of that. And so John Lyons, our principal, had a great idea to empower the teachers in the school. So he mm -hmm. allocated funds to hire six teachers last summer. And so that's the next picture oh. with Melissa Parnell and Sean Musselman. Yeah. And Sean looks pretty casual there. Yes, yes he is. <laughs> there were six of us plus the coaches, and we took every single book. So I we did them from probably 13,000 to 12,000, and we identified the genre, and we had to go in wow. and to the computer system and um, label it or code it. We had to change the the call number. And then, oh, okay. um, so before it would have and been... like re-barcoded it, too, because everything's barcoded now, Everything's right? barcoded. Those got, those were able to stay the same. Oh, okay. But we had to change the call number. So instead of poetry being 811 and the three 
first digits of the author's last name, we changed okay. it to poetry and the author's full last name. Oh. And so Sarah Pizzahockey, I'll never forget, she saw one book and she's like, I don't want to touch it. It could be either a season book because it was spring oh, okay. or an alphabet book or a poetry book. <laughs> so, I'm like, so confused. It was so that, confusing. That would be so like hard. every book for yes. me. It, it was really, really difficult. But... <sighs> Having those six um, teachers help me do that, okay. and I also had friends and family and parent volunteers. Now the and teachers, staff did members. you? I know Mrs. Parnell is a kindergarten teacher, right. but did you have like older teachers as well to get like a cross representation of yes. their experience with the students? We yep, we had all different grade levels oh, represented, cool. as well as the science. Sean represented the science department, oh, okay. and Katie represented. Katie Berkery, the social studies department. Oh, okay. So we had, uh, it, I didn't feel comfortable making these decisions by myself. So just having more people to yeah. help was great. That's, that is very helpful. And it was a team effort. Even the ladies in the office were helping us re put <laughs> the stickers on the books. I mean, everyone helped. It was, wow. it was, it was awesome. We'll work for t-shirt. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Did they get, t no, I won't even ask if they had t-shirts. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, we didn't. Um, and so the old school libraries are organized by easy readers, nonfiction, fiction, biography, and reference. And, um, and picture books are labeled easy readers. Picture books are not yeah. easy books. They have very complex uh, topics. So I just didn't like having that. And I, right now okay. the picture books are, if it's- I don't know, Goodnight Gorilla is pretty easy for a picture book. <laughs> But I just, I didn't, I, I wanted to be able to put them together where kids could find them, oh. them more easily. And also, they were leveled for easy readers and higher readers. Okay. And so kids in a third grade class, some kids would have to go to this, the easy section. Some kids would have to go to the hard section. And that is not what a library is supposed to be. Yeah. A library should be a place where everyone feels comfortable and welcome and yeah. not, not leveled. Yeah, libraries should not be exactly. leveled and so um i'm really adamant about that okay. so now in the 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 categories that you were mentioning one was reference yes is it still worth your efforts as what is it what's your title again classroom a teacher librarian teacher librarian <laughs> teacher li as a teacher librarian yes is it worth your efforts and resources to have reference books or is it just some of that gets dated so quickly do you just have reference online now i do not have a reference section in our learning commons okay. i just have digital resources because they well, are it changes outdated. so fast it does right uh, someone was making fun of me the other day that i don't have a dictionary and so i've rethought that and perhaps i'll purchase a dictionary for our learning commons but um yeah, I just would rather spend our resources on kids want graphic novels, kids okay. they want game books on games, and um, I I want to get a lot of different diverse books on diverse populations mm -hmm. in there. So that's what I'm allocating our money, our funds oh, okay. for. Because yeah, I remember reading um, some books that I had. Yeah. That it's like okay, you know, geography books, great example. Right. You know. Countries in Africa, they change yeah. so quickly. They do. You know, I had a they globe do. in my room that still had the USSR. I'm like, well, okay, this isn't going to be doing me very much good now. Right, exactly. I'll just confuse so, you. Exactly. Or, so. you know, flags, they're always changing around. So I'm right. just thinking with the online shift for research, it would probably just make more sense. Yes, it does. It's okay. more accurate. Okay. I'm sorry. I, I, oh, don't be sorry. Another tangent. Another tangent. <laughs> um, oh, and there's a picture of Katie Mercury. She's the district social studies coach. Yes, that is her. So she helped me a lot. We, um, I have a picture of my son like that with the book, all of his books around <laughs> his feet. Yes, okay. I have lots of pictures of books <laughs> everywhere. The Where do you start? I'm just like thinking, you know, the whole genrefication. Where do you start? Oh, I don't, I don't even remember. Yeah. I blocked it out. It was so traumatic. <laughs> okay, tell me, tell me more about Katie. So in Burlington, we're lucky to have a diverse population, and so Katie, what she did as a district social studies coach, 
um, we have lots of holidays that are celebrated. So okay. she helps um, identify the holidays that are celebrated in Burlington. And so I have a section okay. of all of them. So okay. kids so can like come. a whole holiday section and it's. Yes, and they're all included. And so Ooh. kids can Is learn it like about chronological? their own. like chronological? So if they. We're not there yet. Oh, okay. May maybe one day it will be, but right now oh, it's just okay. holiday section. Okay. There's no rhyme or reason to okay. it at all. January Sunday. holidays, February yes. holidays, okay. Yeah. No, not there. Someday. It's a process. Someday. <laughs> Someday. And so... Um, yeah, because it's a piece of cake, you know, sorting 12,000 books. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I'm still not over it. <laughs> but, um, so everyone can find a book that he can identify with, which oh, okay. is important to me. And she also went through all of our Thanksgiving books, and a lot of them not, were not historically accurate. And <gasps> Really? So, what a yes. surprise. That's sarcasm in that statement. <laughs> okay. So she either, we either pulled the ones that were not significantly or historically accurate, or she put in notes in the beginning of the book to say oh. this, this aspect. If it was just a small aspect that was off, she put a note to, okay. to the reader. Keep in mind. Yes. That that this is, is fiction <laughs> right right okay well yeah but. this part is fiction and this part is okay. historically inaccurate uh, okay um i think that's all i want to talk about that oh we didn't do the april of school library month of oh oh the video yeah so we were talking about that what because does it that, actually mean exactly because that's kind of why i invited right. you now as opposed to like some other month i'm like Hmm. April is school library. I think that's where I got the library media thing. Yeah. So, Colleen, can we take a look at that little PSA about why April is school library media month? I'm Jason Reynolds. And admittedly, when I was a kid, I didn't spend much time in the school library. But that's only because I had no idea that school libraries are as amazing as they are. 20 years later, now what I can see uh, and begrudgingly admit to myself uh, is that school libraries for many, many students are places of refuge. The school library serves as a safe bastion for kids who just want to feel less alone. Um, there are also places of recognition where young people can come in and see each other, create networks amongst one another, and see their faces and their stories and their names on all the books on the shelves and all the other creative components that libraries now offer, including technology. Also, there are places of research. Obviously, everybody knows you go to the school library to find out information, but that information usually comes through a specific conduit, a special resource, and that resource is the school librarian. Now, that librarian has one job. Her job is to basically serve as a buttress, as, as, as an affirmation and a confirmation for every single student that walks through those doors. Now, that sounds like a special place, uh, and it is as special as I make it sound. Now, if you want to join me in celebrating the school libraries around this country, please check out the American Association of School Librarians at AASL.org. That was pretty cool. Yeah. And you're a resource. <laughs> well, I try to be. Like, uh, I don't know, a resource sounds like a thing, not really a person, but I yeah. did notice that he referred to librarians as she. Right. There are a lot of wonderful male librarians as well. He just had to pick a pronoun. Well, yeah, that's true. It's one of the issues with the English language that yes. you always have to have a pronoun. Yes. Well, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Was there anything else in that video that triggered me? I don't think so. But that was, you know, really cool because it's, it's nice to have that safe environment, especially with all the social things that are going on in our society, social and society. It, Poor choice of words, but yeah. there are so many issues that kids have to deal with on a daily basis. It's nice to have like a safe environment where they can all learn and not feel like they're judged. So right. it's important. You're a miracle worker. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. So as we kind of introduced Back in the beginning of our conversation, you said you were like ahead of your time when you first started teaching because you wanted to introduce media. How, I don't remember the statistic, but media changes, uh, you know, media changes, technology changes so quickly. How are you able to keep up either with the hardware side or the software, it's pretty much software right now. Right. How do you keep up with 
the World Wide Web. I mean, there's so much out there. How do you find it and how do you keep up with it? Right. And T Twitter is probably my number one resource. I, oh, okay. I use it to help me professionally in many ways. Um, seeing what people who I respect, what, what they're learning about. Mm -hmm. And then it's also a place for me to bounce off ideas. So if I'm oh, trying something out, okay. I can write a blog post about it, I can tweet it out, and I can get responses. Mm. But attending national conferences and state-level conferences okay. are really important to me, especially the national conferences. Okay. So attending, How often are those? They happen every year. So every okay. year is the American Library Association, every June, okay. every January. And that's for all libraries, not just school? That's school libraries oh, as well oh. as as well as regular oh, libraries. Okay. And then they also have a midwinter winter meeting every January. Okay. Hopefully and somewhere warm like the Bahamas. Usually we pick in a, in expensive places so it's not very nice. North Dakota <laughs> in the winter. Yeah. It okay. was in Boston 2 years ago so that was convenient. <laughs> Um, and then also the International Society for Technology and Education. That's every June as well. And they have a huge okay. school librarian, teacher librarian population Ooh. where I learn a lot of information. And every other year is the American Association of School Librarians. And that's okay. in the fall. And so those are the conferences where I feel I learn a lot. I learn okay. a lot from state conferences as well, but okay. I learn more from the national but level. It's also conference. nice to you know see how other regions... Are studied. Now, yes. when you were talking about attending these conferences, mm -hmm. it made me kind of trigger. Since you are a teacher librarian, teacher comes first. Yes. Teachers, as in classroom teachers, always need to be taking professional development classes, recertification, keeping up their game. What kind of recertification or trainings do you have to do? Is it just these conferences or... Um, Are there other things that you need to maintain for, like, a teaching license? Right. I have a teaching license. Okay. And so I have to maintain it just the same as oh, okay. the teachers, except for my certification is called Library Media Specialist. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I know. Your favorite term. <laughs> and so, but yes, I have to do that. And by taking lots of doctoral classes, I get that covered, going to oh, national okay. conferences. And I also um, go to a lot of ed camps. They're free. What's that? Ed camps are free days of professional development for teachers by teachers. Oh, I actually okay. organize, co-organize the one in Portsmouth, New Hampshire, Ed Camp Seacoast. Mm. And we started that from, um, we went to Ed Camp Boston. And um, okay. so it's, it's great. It's on now, a Saturday. This is camp. It's not like tents or anything. No, nope, oh, okay. no. Nope. We just have it at a place and it's usually food is free. And Even the better. schedule is created that morning based on wow. what we want to learn and what we want to share about what we know. And it's really organic okay. collaboration. I'm just thinking so. that's kind of intimidating for the organizers. It's like, what are we going to talk about? I don't know. Let's find out in 20 minutes. Right. It's just a whole mind wow. shift of how. Is it like a networking thing or is there like actually real curriculum? Oh, we talk about real cu curriculum. We also have okay. networking, but um, okay. it's, it's just a balance. It's really nice and it's, it's free. So I mean. Oh. Vendors don't okay. come in, so it's really organic. Okay. And so I learn a lot from Ed Camps. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So when are these on weekends? So the okay. one in Ed Camp Seacoast is in every October. Okay. The one Ed Camp Boston is every March. Oh, so we just okay. missed that. It was last month. But it, and everyone can go. It's not just for teachers. It's for okay. educators, that was kind of like school my board next members, question. parents, like, wow. administrators. How do you find out about this stuff? Uh, on Twitter. The, Twitter, of course. <laughs> but I don't have a Twitter account. Oh, you I'm have to get one. You have to. I'll let you know next time. But okay. So at Camp Seacoast in October and at Camp Boston okay. in um and then lots of these national conferences I go to, they have an ed camp the day before the conference starts, oh, and they are a lot of fun okay. to attend to. And it's really fun to just meet all of my PLN, my personal learning network, oh. from all that I collaborate with on Twitter, and so then I the see them in person. So all the people you follow on Twitter putting, yes. you know, real faces, not just pictures. Right, exactly. Okay. I think we've covered most of your... Oh, wait! Oh, there's a whole other page of stuff! <laughs> So what kind, you know, the training is really cool, but what kind of media are used? Media, media are, media is, 
What do you use in your library? So we're so lucky to have one-on-one iPads, except for kindergarten, but hopefully we'll get that. And so kids, when they come to the library, they have their iPad. And so if they, they bring it from the classroom. They okay. bring it from the classroom. And if they want a book, they log on to Destiny, and they can see um, where the book is, and they'll go find oh. it and check it out themselves. Or if it's not in, they can put it on hold, and I'll deliver it to them as soon oh. as it comes in. Or if we don't own it, they'll put it on the wish list, and I'll buy it. Okay. Now, speaking of wish lists and everything, I know that the Burlington Public Library belongs to a consortium. Right. Where if Burlington doesn't have a particular book that you want, it can be delivered from Bill Ricca or from Chelmsford or from one of the um, other libraries. Do Does the school system have some kind of collaborative where if Pine Glen doesn't have something, maybe Memorial might have it or... We they do. do? Yes. Oh, yes. cool. Absolutely. We I was like, I hope I don't put her on the spot. But. Yeah, no, we do. It's part of the Destiny catalog okay. system. We okay. have online catalog system, management system. Um, Not that I don't want you to go buy books because right. you know, everyone needs the complete set of Captain Underpants. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, in full color. <laughs> um, so. Hardcover, too. Hardcover, yeah. Well, when you do the tangent when you do the flipperamas right. and move the page back and forth the paperbacks yeah. just don't hold up as well no matter how careful you are right. but the hardcovers have a better binding so you don't pull the page out after right. reading it for the 600th time so <laughs> no we love captain underpants we really do i know i love it so okay so collaboration is this just okay so they have their ipads but do you have like additional iPads that are backup or? We do have additional iPads and that we have a lot of, um, we have a makerspace section where kids come and they um, use apps and they use Osmos and type different types of, I can't think of the term of what they're called right now. Okay. But, so we do have extra iPads for that. Okay. Not that, you know, you want two for each kid. Right, but... no, no, but just for filming okay. and for uh, media. So you do so filming too? We do, we do. Oh, cool. <laughs> Tell me about that yeah. a little bit. So Mr. Donoff and I do it. And so, for instance, the kindergarten students just um, wrote a April, a poem about spring okay. and using the senses. And so they read their books and Mr. Donoff filmed them oh. and put in them, them on YouTube. And also, all the kindergartners just came up with their favorite book, and they wrote a poster, and so Ooh. they filmed their poster. And oh, so, fun. Okay. Yeah. Because I think, I don't know, it might have been um, Miss Sheffer when she's at Fox Hill now, she right? Is. I remember seeing, like, a video clip of either third or fourth graders, like, reenacting the Mayflower landing or something. They, they, like, actually acted out this whole yeah. historic event. So is that something that you do, or is it more simplified, like having children record their stories? Well, in kindergarten, it's more simplified, okay. but the older they get, we do do simulations you do like that. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah, cool. We have a green screen that can oh, capture Oh, I remember the cool green things. screen. Yeah. 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 Um, Gee. You know, you could always come to BCAT, too, because we have, like, a whole green wall. I know. That's so well, cool. Well, it's hidden somewhere, but it is around right here somewhere. right over there, yeah. <laughs> okay. So another thing that I'm looking at is Internet safety. Yes. There's always been a discussion about parents monitoring their kids' screen time. You know, parents generally only have, you know, a handful of kids. You have, like, 20. Right. All at the same time. How do you monitor? How, you, What kind of safety measures or tools are you given to keep this environment safe? Well, the ed tech team is phenomenal, and they're what they provide for our schools. Um, we have um, all... We have a fully filtered network in all school buildings. Oh, okay. We use Google Safe Search and Gaggle and Social Sentinel to monitor the content. Never heard of Gaggle before. Oh. Mm, okay. <laughs> well, if you've been to an ISTE conference, you will, would course. have heard of Gaggle before. Well, uh, of course. <laughs> Where have I been? <laughs> and um, also, students can only email teachers and other students. They can't oh. email people outside of the BPS K12 or .org or the BPS K oh, okay. the BPS121.org. So there's network. like an address book in there of safe 
email users like other students type thing? It's not so much an address book per se. I, I guess that's behind the scenes, but if okay. they were to try to email you at your personal okay. Gmail account, okay. it wouldn't go through. It'd be filtered. But if like my daughter wanted to email my son about something or my- She could or, do that. Yep. If because she's they're both in the one to BPS, yes. one to one dot org network. Uh, so they can okay. email each other or they oh, okay. can email the teachers or in the k12.org. Got it. Okay. So did we finish that conversation? Yeah, I think we're, and parents can also go to the bpsedtech.org website to find oh, out more okay. information about how to make sure their kids are about, safe. Yeah. Because, you know, it's intimidating. You know, something called the World Wide Web is kind of scary. It is. It is. So. I think there's a website right there. There it is. Oh, Yay! <laughs> so. Do you have, you know, looking along, we're almost out of time. Mm -hmm. What kind of, I, we touched upon the collaboration that you have with the teachers, but what kind of role do you play in curriculum development? I know Wendy and Sean just came up with this whole new science curriculum right. that the teachers love, but right. how big or small of a role do you play in developing curriculum? And is it system-wide or is it just within your school or uh, it's both it's system-wide it's within oh. our school so okay. there are a lot of fun things that we do for instance um, we have a children's discussion group there's a, t a picture with teachers the every and this is through across the entire district every school oh, um, okay. this district purchases books for the teachers we read them we talk about them after school and we connect it to the curriculum, which is... Okay, so you say you read the books to the teachers. Are they adult books or are they kids' books kid that they books. can use in the classroom? There are kid books that they use in the classroom with okay. their kids. And it's K, in the elementary schools are K through five. So it's great to have okay. a, a discussion about the curriculum. Okay, so if five. they're doing a, ta a theme or unit on weather, you could say, oh, well, here's some age-appropriate books on weather that you could use as supplemental material. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Just want to make sure I'm getting yeah. it correctly. Yeah. No, that's great. And then we also go to grade level meetings and collaborate with oh, okay. teachers on their units of study. And In your copious spare time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Since we are almost out of time, what do you hope, what new changes do you hope to introduce to the Learning Commons at Pine Glen? Um, I just want to get as many authors as possible to come in to talk to the kids to build passionate lifelong readers because oh, okay. the more kids read, the better they get, the more they like it, and that cycle. And that human connection. Too. Yes. So you actually yeah. get real authors to we, come in? We do. We have uh, so Julia cool. Cook is coming April 26th, and then Barnes & Nobles in Burlington is sponsoring Aaron Becker. He's a Ooh. Caldecott Honor Award recipient, and he's coming on May 9th, which is so exciting. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, we're really lucky. <laughs> and um, I'm the type of person who always asks for new things. And I just have to say that I am so grateful for everything Burlington has given to our Learning Commons. The space that they redesigned is just priceless. Excellent. And so I'm pretty grateful. Yay. <laughs> well, we are out of time. Okay. So I want to thank you so much for coming in. Oh, you're welcome. My and pleasure. I got to learn so much more about the behind the scenes of what you do. So when I come yeah. in and volunteer, it'll make more sense yeah, now. Yeah, it will. So thank you very much. You're welcome. And thank I also you. want to thank everyone at home for tuning in this evening. I hope you found our conversation as enlightening and inspirational as I have. And I will see you around town. Good night.